In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. <laughs> happy Easter. Happy Easter. And happy Feast of St. Joseph the Worker on this third Sunday of Easter. And what a joy for us all to be here to bless the new Pilgrim Chapel and Shrine. Um, un gozo y alegría para estar aquí con ustedes, con esta comunidad de fe, para bendecir este uh, Capilla Nueva. And so let us pray. Oremos. Almighty God, who are wholly present and wholly active in every place, listen to our humble prayers and be the protector of this oratory as you are its founder. Let no evil prevail here, and by the working of the Holy Spirit, may praise and worship always be given to you in this place and holiness spread to all places. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon to all of you. We are truly grateful for the presence and support of our beloved and most reverend bishop, Kevin Sweeney of the Diocese of Patterson. And we are also honored to have here Brother Michael and Brother Thomas Joseph. These Franciscans were the original owners of that mosaic that is inside the oratory, the Pilgrim Chapel. And we also have the Franciscans, Mother Mary Thomas, and little sisters of the poor, Tatoa, who gifted that mosaic to our dear brother, Martin Pacholik, and that's how it came to us. All our cherished donors and benefactors who helped us build this chapel together with Saint Joseph. And all of you valued guests and honors for whom, for whom this chapel, this oratory was built. A todos ustedes, para quien se ha cumplido esta capilla, bienvenidos a todos. And we welcome you not only to today's event, the blessing and dedication, we would like to welcome you to come back every day. <laughs> come back every day. Because in 1924, when our father, Thomas Judge, surveyed this hill, and so the grandiose beauty of God, just look around. All these trees, the birds, the air, the sky. He concluded then that he would gift this hill to you and to me. And that is why we want to welcome you here every day. It is in this place that God has decided to linger and wait for you to spend even just a little time during the pilgrimage of life to come here and enjoy his presence and his leisure. So welcome, and welcome back again and again. This is your place of rendezvous with God. And God lingers here on this hill in order to take you beyond yourselves and your prayers. Because he wants to fill you not only with graces and blessings and beauty, but with his very self. And then when he has filled you with himself, then he will send you forth back into the world. And there you will carry him to be good, to do good, 
and to be power for good. Aquí en este rincón del cielo, Dios ha elegido quedarse esperando tu venida día tras día para compartir contigo más allá de los límites de ti. Y las oraciones a llenarte no solo con las gracias y bendiciones, sino también con Él mismo. Y después de llenarte, te envía otra vez al mundo para ser bueno, para ser el bueno y ser poder para el bien. Pues bienvenidos a todos, todos los días, and we rejoice with one another. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Joseph, her husband, since he was righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Father Dennis, and uh, I had the privilege of being here at the Shrine for the last six years, and uh, it has been a great blessing to be a part of this great journey together with so many of you. And for each, con, each, con cada uno de ustedes, han sido parte de esta gran peregrinación to this great pilgrimage of bringing this place of prayer uh, to the very, as a gift to the people of God, not just for right now, but for many generations to come, for muchas generaciones. And so we give thanks to God for this day. And I was invited to give a small reflection on St. Joseph. And Father was very clear, I have five minutes. <laughs> Tengo cinco minutos. So I better start. <laughs> so life is a journey, but not necessarily a lonely one. Chris, a nine-year-old boy of the Yaqui Native American people of the Arizona desert, reminded me of this when talking to his fourth grade class on the reservation about, quote, our spiritual journey. I drew a triangle representing God in one corner of the, of the board and the little stick man way down in the, in the corner, in the other corner, and then connected them with a long road. Then I said to the class, see, this is our spiritual journey. But little Chris immediately raised his hand and objected, no, no, Father, you have it all wrong. So I thought, well, I have my doctorate, so I, how could I be wrong? <laughs> and he said, no, Father, we never go on our journey alone. All our ancestors go with us. And he was right. All our ancestors go with us. And so we give today, we give thanks to our ancestors, this great cloud of witnesses who are with us here today, beginning with St. Joseph. 
Joseph's story in Matthew's gospel begins with a list of the ancestors, a somewhat dysfunctional family history, murderers, rapists, and tyrants, but also saints and reformers and a slew of very normal people just trying to make it. Yet quietly, out of this knotted, crazy, wild history, emerges, quote, Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, the Messiah, the long-awaited Savior. Yet it seems all so ordinary, so anticlimactic. And from the very beginning, the life of Joseph, who was, we believe, an 18-year-old laborer, his 15-year-old, probably illiterate wife, and single mom, Mary, and Jesus, a son of uncertain origin. Their lives were marked right from the beginning by crisis. But Joseph's response was always the same. Pray to know God's will. Be, mer be mindful of the realities around you. Listen to the movements of your heart. And then come to clarity, decide, and act. This pattern defined his life. And slowly, his vocation unfolded. And then Joseph, being the man that he was, exits as quietly and undramatically as he entered. A humble, simple man of prayer who had courageously fulfilled his life's holy mission. Now today we also celebrate the International Day of, of Thanksgiving for the brothers, for the missionary, for the brothers of the church. Men who take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience and selflessly serve God's people. They too are our ancestors in the faith. Humble, simple men of prayer like people that you probably have never known or heard their names before. Brothers Theodore Jert, the first custodian of the shrine. Brother Augustine Phillips, the, fish, the first brother and first member of our congregation. And Brother Joseph Limpert, a former employee of Mack Truck. Some of Father Judge's earliest followers and natives here of New Jersey. Although largely unknown to us, they were key in fulfilling God's holy plan for the shrine. And of course, the gift and the grit of Brother Martin Pachalik, who brought this mosaic of St. Joseph here 40 years ago. All of them together, their lives, their yes to God, makes our presence here today possible. And so like Joseph, these brothers and our other ancestors in the faith single-mindedly sought God's will in their lives, and once discovered, determined to do, as the scripture says of Joseph, as the angel of the Lord commanded them. That was their lives. This is the sacred wisdom of the ancestors, the very meaning, message, and mission of the Pilgrim Chapel, to remind us of this holy wisdom, simplicity, prayer, humility, that can transform hearts and make, as the scripture says, all things new. We are about a life-changing, world-transforming act here today. Let us open the doors, invite God in, and let God, as the scripture says, create truly through these gifts of simplicity and humility and prayer and love and forgiveness and mercy, to let God create a new heavens and a new earth. Amen. I hope it wasn't more than five minutes. <laughs> I only got two and a half. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's just a great joy to be with you. And as we're about to bless the shrine, just to thank Father Dennis Berry for um, his beautiful words that he just shared, Father Seraphim, who, like myself, in some ways is a new arrival um, here in the diocese and here at the shrine. Um, but now a little less than two years as, as the bishop of the Diocese of Patterson, learning about the history here um, at the Shrine of St. Joseph at this beautiful place, um, on, as Father Seraphim refer, referred to in Spanish, La Rincon, in the corner um, of our diocese. When I first arrived and was communicating with Father Dennis, he would often say, uh, so, uh, salutations from Las Fronteras, <laughs> greetings from the frontiers of the diocese. Um, but what a blessing uh, this place of prayer has been and continues to be for the diocese. And it'll always hold a special place in my heart, arriving in the diocese um, in July of 2020 in the midst of the pandemic that we were all living through at that time and continue to live through in so many ways. Um, but uh, it was, I came in July of 2020 and I'll never forget waking up on the morning of December 8th, 2020 and looking at my computer and say, learning that Pope Francis was announcing that had just announced that the church would have a special year of St. Joseph starting today. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the plans for this pilgrim chapel, as I remember coming just a little over a year ago to bless the ground before it, it became the beautiful place of prayer that will bless today and will be, as Father Dennis said, for generations. Uh, we thank all those who have made it possible, the donors who have helped to build this specific shrine, but also to make this place the beautiful place of prayer that it is for pilgrims on the journey. And I just wanted to share with you uh, just a word that the church gives us on this Feast of St. Joseph the Worker in the Office of Readings in the, in the Liturgy of the Hours. The church on this day points us to the document from the Second Vatican Council called Gaudium et Spes, um, the hope of God's people. Uh, and, and it says this, by, lab by his labors and ability, man has always striven to improve the quality of his life. Today, particularly by means of science and technology, he has extended his mastery over the whole of nature and still continues to extend it through the development of many means of communications among nations. And I note that this was written in 1965. They thought they were doing something with communications then. Uh, uh, the development of communications among nations, the human family is coming to see itself and establish itself as a single worldwide community. We're responding in these days, my sisters and brothers, to Pope Francis's invitation to the Synod on Synodality. As Father Barry mentioned, we're on the journey of life, and now we have this pilgrim chapel where we can stop and pray. The, the Second Vatican Council, Gaudium Spes, goes on. As a result, where formerly men looked especially to supernatural forces for his blessing, he now secures many of these benefits for himself thanks to his own efforts. In the face of these, this vast enterprise now engaging the whole human race, men and women are asking themselves a series of questions. What is the meaning and value of all this act activity? And we might add technology. How should these benefits be used? Where are the efforts of individuals and communities finally leading us? We need to stop and pray. We need places on the journey where we can come together, where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name and encounter one another and discern how the Holy Spirit is leading us. As has been said, this Pilgrim Chapel for us today and for generations to come, he in our diocese, for those within and outside the diocese, thanking the brothers and fathers of the Trinitarian Order, um, all those religious who are here with us today, all those who have made this chapel possible, we give thanks to God, and now we ask God's blessing upon this new place of prayer, this pilgrim chapel. Please stand. And please reply, we beg you, hear us. That you graciously visit this place we beg you, hear us. That you appoint your angels and saints to guard it. To guard it. We beg you, hear it. That you bless this oratory for the honor of your name and that of St. Joseph, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we beg you, hear us.